Hey everyone, in this quick video, I'll show you exactly how to install XAMPP so you can run MySQL locally for any Python or data analytic projects. XAMPP bundles MySQL plus PHP MyAdmin in one free installer, no manual configurations. So open up your browser and type in apachefriends.org and enter. It brings you to this page. So here you'll see download. Choose the latest version for Windows or Mac OS. I'm going to select this one here for Windows. For this step, it should download automatically. If not, you have a message here. Your download will start automatically. If it doesn't, click here. Here on the top right, I have a little downloads button. I'll click that. And you can see it is now downloaded. Otherwise, it will show you the process of the download. I will open my downloads file where it downloaded and double click it. Now you might see this pop up warning about something called UAC. So this is Windows saying it may block XAMPP from working right if you install it inside your C slash programs file, which is right here. But don't worry to avoid issues, just install in the default location. For example, your C slash XAMPP file. So when you get to this part, just click OK and continue to the default settings. Next, you will see a window that the setup is started. All you have to do is click Next. So next are the tools that you're going to be installed. You can click on the ones that you want to install or you can unclick on the ones that you don't want to install. In this case, we're going to keep the default settings and keep these tools. So simply just click Next. So now we're going to go ahead and keep this lo file location. This is the file location we want to keep it in because again, at the beginning, it gave us a warning. So we want to make sure to save it in this file here. So just go ahead and click on next. And then now we will select on next again. Now it will start the installation. So next windows may ask you for a default firewall and that has been blocked. All you have to do is allow access, make sure it's public networks is checked. Then you will see this screen here. This is saying that completing the XAMPP setup wizard and then ask, do you want to start control panel now and click finish. So this control panel shows you each service. So it has Apache, MySQL. So we're going to start with MySQL. So you just click on start to start those services and it will highlight and it also gives you a warning. So allow. You can stop it if you want to, but in this case, we're going to keep that. So now MySQL has started running and it's on port 3306. Now for each of these to be able to run properly, like for example, if I do Apache start, sometimes you might get an error down here that it's not able to run. And if you do get that error, all you have to do is get out of here by clicking the X button, making sure you're all the way logged out. So at the bottom of your windows, you will have a search bar or your little windows icon in your search bar, just search for XAMPP. So here it is here and go ahead and run as administrator. So once you click that and it reopens, you will now be running it as administrator. You have to make sure you're running this app as administrator for all of these to go ahead and start. Otherwise you will get an error down here. So again, just make sure you're logged out completely. Once you get that error, go back in by searching XAMPP on Windows, search bar, open as administrator. Now from here, you can see that there is configuration. You can click that, see your configurations. Also your logs, you can view your logs. Um, here on the right side, there's also a configuration button. It shows you this window here. Um, net stats, here's all of your stats. You can also refresh. Um, you have your shell which gives you easy access to open up your shell. And then you have your Explorer for your files, um, services, your help button, and then quit. So you can go ahead and quit from here or here. So I'm going to open up my browser again, and I'm going to type in local host slash, which is a forward slash, php my admin forward slash then you hit enter and it will bring you to this page here 
So this is PHP my admin. So this is where you're going to be able to create your databases and tables. So if you go up here to your top left corner where it says databases, you click that. This is where you create your database. You can go ahead and put in the database name. For example, we'll put new DB for database and then create. Once it creates, you'll see it here on your left side, which is your list. And once you create that database, this page here, it says create new table. So then you can go ahead and create a table name and number of columns and create. So we'll just go ahead and create a customer's table and say well, there's four columns, create. Then it brings you to this page here and it has the four columns. So now it wants the four column names. So you can put um, name and select, say for example, we'll do text for data type and then we'll do last name. And again, it's gonna be a text for data type, product, another text, amount. And in this case, we're going to do a decimal. So you can do length of values, default, all of these other options here within your columns. Then you can go down here to this button here. It says preview SQL. You can click that and it gives you the example of that SQL script and close. And then you can go ahead and save. And it brings you to this structure tab. You can click on SQL to see the SQL search insert, export, import. It's a lot of really easy to navigate with PHP MyAdmin. So now going back to your files, and again, remember we put it in our Windows, our C drive, you'll have a folder called XAMPP. So you open that, and then you'll see an HTDC docs. So this is where you're going to put all of your PHP files in. So we'll go ahead and double click that to get in here and you'll see all of these files already included in here. So any of your PHP docs that you add in here will be created on your server. So within this folder, we're gonna go ahead and create a new file. So right click, go to new folder, and then we will call this connect underscore MySQL. Enter. And now within this folder is blank. So now you can go ahead and right click and go to show more options. In this case, if you have Visual Studio here, you'll just go ahead and open this folder under Visual Studio. But if you do not, like I don't, I will show you an example. You'll just go to your Windows search bar in your computer and search for VS Code or Visual Studio. Once you search that, you just go ahead and click on it or open. Then once you're here, you can go ahead and open folder. And then now just go to that folder location. So in this case, it was our C drive. And then you go all the way down to XAMPP. And then in XAMPP, you go ahead and go to htdocs. And here we just created this connect underscore MySQL. So we'll just go ahead and select that where it says folder name and select folder. Now you should have it here on your left side, connect MySQL, and we will go ahead and add a new file. You can do it here on the top where it has the little icon here, or in this area here, it says start new file, click on new file. Then it'll ask you for the file name. So we can go connect.py, enter, and it asks you where you wanna save this. It should automatically put it in the folder that you are working out of, which is the htdocs connect underscore MySQL and create file. So now that we created that file, it's empty, but we're gonna go ahead and create a code in here because what we're trying to do is we want to connect Python to MySQL using XAMPP. Let's test this and see if our Python code can actually connect to MySQL database. So here I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my code move this down a little bit so we can see better. So here on my import mysql.connector, this is a library that we're gonna be using. Then we have print script started. So we're gonna start our script and this is what it's gonna print out the text. Um, then it's gonna go ahead and do a connect, which is a variable that will equal to mysql.connector.connect. 
and then here is host equals local host. So what this means, we're using the database on your own computer. Then the default for user for ZAMP is root. So that's why we're using root here. And then the password is usually blank unless you changed it. And if you changed it, put in your password here, but otherwise just leave it blank. And finally, we reference the name of the database we created. So remember, we created the new DB inside of PHP My Admin. So then here, we're going to connect. So once it's connected, it's going to go ahead and say it's successfully connected. Otherwise, it's going to print connection object created but is connected returns false. Um, these are just error messages in case specific errors happen. So now that I have my code inside my connect.python file, what, is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a control S to save. So make sure to save this. Then on the top here, left side, you'll see your file, edit, section, view, go, run. And then there's terminal there. So click on terminal and then click from the drop down new terminal. Now you'll see a new terminal here. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this code. So we're going to go Python space connect dot py so again this is our file name see up here so whatever your file name is is what you're going to run so it'll be python then your file name dot py now i'm going to hit enter and it says script started which is our output here and it said connected to mysql successfully and we did it python is now successfully connected to our mysql database all running locally through zap this is key step for any data analyst or developer who wants to work with live structured data. Rather, it's for dashboards, data pipelines, or full applications. In the next video, I'll take this even further by building a real-time streamlit dashboard that pulls data from MySQL and we can visualize it using Plotly. So make sure to subscribe, like the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.